Okay, one of the things I want to address, let's talk about the hiddenness of God or the rumored hiddenness of God. One very prominent member of your squad, Mr. Scott Clifton, has gone so far as to say that it seems to him like God is playing peekaboo with humanity. That he's, he, all of these questions about his existence could be solved really, really easily by him just showing up and not being hidden. Well, well let's take a look at the, the underlying assumption. Is God, in fact, really hidden? Is that true in any meaningful sense? And let's, let's say, maybe it's not. Maybe what you see depends on what you're expecting to see. And what you see depends on where you're at and what you're bringing to the table. Let's take one really famous example. Uh, there's a really famous prophecy in the Old Testament, Isaiah 53. Possibly the most famous prophetic passages in the Old Testament. It's certainly up there with the most famous passages. If you haven't read it, you should go read it before you listen to this. I'd take you two minutes. It's one little blurb. Now, I haven't memorized the whole thing off the top of my head. That's why I say to go read it. Uh, to the Christian, to the believer, there are certain passages in Isaiah 53. He was wounded for our transgression. The, the, with his stripes, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, and God has laid on him the iniquity of us all. To the Christian, Looking at Isaiah 53, this is so obviously case closed, no ifs, ands, or buts, referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. This is so obviously a prophecy and a complete and 100% real one that it doesn't even, it's not even a question. I look at that and I'm like, oh yeah, obviously, Jesus. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He was wounded, he was bruised for our iniquity, wounded for our transgressions. The most famous verse probably, we all like sheep have gone astray and God hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. It's obviously talking about Jesus Christ. Now, here's the rub. I say it as the Christian. You, the atheist, you read it and you say what? Probably, ah, it's vague. It's vague. Could be anything. You don't read it you don't look at it the same way that I look at it. Now, I would venture to tell you, and I promise you this is true, there are at least, at least, three million people alive today, at least, who were in a moment of crisis, cried out to God and said, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. They were... Christian ease. They were kind of Christians, but they really needed to know that God was real. And they, and, and they cried out to God and they said, reveal yourself to me. Now, three million is a low ball number. It's probably more like ten, but there are at least three million. I promise you this is true. They said those exact words. God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. Cried out in anguish in their soul. And then they turned to that exact scripture. That exact passage, Isaiah 53, and I promise you, they broke down in tears. They broke down in tears because in that moment, in that moment when they read that, they knew, they knew for a fact that God was real and speaking to them through the Bible. Now, I say knew. A lot of times, you'll hear the atheists say, faith, well, it's believing something without any evidence. That's what Richard Dawkins said. Believe something without any evidence. That's not believing something without any evidence. That's knowing something. Period. Having God, in a split second, reveal something to you that is powerful and unshakable and unmistakable. And if you deny it past that point, you're a liar. People have those experiences. That's what we're debating. Now, there are Christians out there who have never had that experience, that never had that knowing. And it's not faith as you understand it. It's knowing. That's why I can't be shaken from it. It's nothing to do with dogma, nothing to do with closed-mindedness. 
It's that God revealed himself to me. And in those moments where he did it powerfully, I knew. Period. Case closed. 